Hi there, and welcome to the Digital Connections for the youth at Living Grace Baptist Church. My name is Sean Stingle. I'm glad to be meeting with you here virtually until uh, we are able to get a plan in place to meet in person uh, and uh, after we get out of the transition of um, looking for a new youth pastor here at Living Grace. Uh, we've been going through a series called Pursuits, uh, started back in August, looking at going uh, from not just a routine uh, in our Christian faith, but into a relationship with God. And we were looking this week at uh, upside down kingdom. Uh, and this week we're looking at being uh, representative for Christ. You know, uh, what do we represent as Christians? And before we uh, dive in here, our question here uh, is describe a fun trip you went on with other people. I think for me, one of the funnest trips I've been on with other people was when I got to go to a Turkish scout camp with three other fellow Girl Scouts. Why was that fun? We were the first and only Americans to have ever been to that Turkish scout camp. And uh, everybody wanted to come meet us because we were the Americans. We got to go to a party with dignitaries and we got to travel along the Turkish coast and go to beaches. It was just an all over trip of something that I never would have been able to do otherwise. Uh, when I think of a fun trip I've been on was when I went with um, the uh, different band students all across uh, Kentucky and different choir members uh, to Europe when we went and traveled and uh, played music in London and Paris and um, in Venice, um, in Austria, in Germany. I'm not sure what cities in there uh, we actually played in, but we also uh, went and spent time uh, there and also in Switzerland uh, as well. And so we, you know, we got to go and visit these sites uh, around Europe and also be able to play uh, together uh, as stu band students and choir students from Kentucky uh, and playing our uh, national anthem, our state song, uh, as well as other uh, things like Phillips, uh, John Philip Sousa and other, uh, other artists uh, from, uh, from America uh, in Europe. And it was a fun experience to go out and do that. Uh, and so uh, we're going to take a look into the Bible, looking at uh, what it means uh, to be a representative of Christ, what, what God is looking for from us. Uh, and so uh, living in Christ's kingdom uh, can sometimes uh, feel like being in two places at once, you know. Uh, on one hand, we're called to focus on eternal things. You know, we're uh, focusing on uh, life with Christ. We're focusing on uh, our reward in heaven. You know, we're focusing on our inheritance that we have as uh, the members of the family of God. You know, uh, the store up the treasures in heaven uh, and worship our heavenly king. Uh, on the other hand, we are called to bring Christ's kingdom to earth by telling others about him, letting people know who he is and what he's done. Uh, sometimes it's hard to navigate these two roles. You know, thankfully, we have a guide to help us. You know, uh, Paul wrote a letter to the church in Corinth uh, that explains that Christ followers are ambassadors of Christ. You know, they're representatives. An ambassador is someone who represents or is a messenger uh, for someone else. Uh, they have the power to speak for the ruler who has called them and sent them. Uh, as Christ representatives, we can powerfully bring his kingdom into our world. And so we'll be looking at this letter and looking at uh, chapter 5, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 21 here. For we know that if our earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal dwelling in the heavens not made with hands. Indeed, we groan in this tent, desiring to put on our heavenly dwelling, since when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. Indeed, we groan while we are in this tent, burdened as we are, 
because we do not want to be unclothed, but clothed, so that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who, has, who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Spirit as a down payment. So we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. In fact, we are confident and we would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Therefore, whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil." Therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade people. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your consciousness. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to be proud of us, so that you may have a reply for those who take pride in outward appearance rather than in the heart. For if we are out of our mind, it is for God." For if we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, since we have reached this conclusion, if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. From now on, then, we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Even if we have known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we no longer know him this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Everything is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation." That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so uh, we see this letter that Paul has written uh, to the church in Corinth about being representatives of God and uh, where our motivation for that comes from and how our love of, you know, the, how the love of Christ compels us to uh, push this message forward and let others know, you know, what God has done. You know, let them know the gospel message that uh, God came and uh, made us to be with Him, and we sinned and fell away from Him. Uh, and He made a way back for us. Uh, he reconciled us back to Himself by sending His Son to take our pit place, take our punishment. And, you know, he, uh, His Son died and rose again, proving that He uh, had power over death and that He uh, was the one true God uh, and that we can trust in Him and Him alone uh, for eternal life, and that life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. And with that message, you know, the first thing we see from Paul is uh, that we're called to be courageous. We're called uh, to stand in, um, on this with confidence. You know, we represent the King of the universe. We represent God. We represent Christ in this world. Uh, we're supposed to be shining and showing who they are and giving them the glory. You know, God has given all of His followers the Holy Spirit to equip them to call others to be reconciled to God. And God gives us the power and authority we need to bring God's kingdom to earth. You know, just look at Matthew 28 where we've got the Great Commission you know, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. You know, we are given this message, we're given this uh, ministry of reconciliation from God as Christ's followers. We represent Him so that we can lead others back to Him, so that we can show them uh, what He has done for them. You know, we must keep this in mind as we build Christ's kingdom boldly. You know, we have uh, been given the authority because Christ has that authority to give. Uh, he wants us to bring others to Him. He wants us to bring that message to the world. Uh, and we see next uh, from Paul that what we do matters. You know, when we see others live, uh, when we see others uh, the way, um, I'm sorry, when others see the way we live, how we act, and speak, and spend our resources, spend our time, and spend our money, you know, they should see Christ in everything we do. Everything that uh, makes us up is all about Christ. You know, He is the one we represent. Looking at verse 14, you know, it said, for the love of Christ compels us. You know, the, it is our motivation uh, for all of this, for how we live, and it should be shown in that. That motivation should be speaking out to the world. And therefore, we live for Christ. You know, we live our lives for Him. It's not just we go to church and then we go out and live our lives separately, but everything we do is lifting up God's name and giving Him the glory, the one who sacrificed Himself for us. And we should aim to please Him in everything we do. You know, whenever you're out, you know, playing sports, whenever you're at school, whenever you're at your home, when you're in the church, when you're with your friends, wherever you are, everything you should, do, you should be doing should be in an aim to please Him. Uh, we need to keep Him first and foremost. You know, He wants to be a part of every single aspect of our lives, uh, he doesn't just want to be placed in, uh, and you, you've said a prayer in the morning, you said your prayer at night, you know, and you're done for the day, but He wants to be in your life completely. He wants you to be showing Him everywhere you go. And the last point we see uh, from Paul is that uh, live on earth with eternity in mind. You know, we're, we're not just focused on just the here and now, the present, but we're focused on the eternity, you know, what God has promised, what is ahead for us, uh, what lies, uh, you know, where we're going and what God has promised us. Uh, this passage shows that Christians should long for heaven uh, and yet prepare here and now for the time when we will be judged for how we spent our time on earth, how we spent uh, what God has given us. We have a job to do as Christ's ambassadors, as His representatives. Just as an ambassador in a foreign country represents his home country, uh, even for a temporary time, so, that, so can we bring Christ's kingdom to those around us in this temporary time where we are in the moment? You know, we're supposed to be going out and living uh, as Christ so that others can see Him, you know, in this moment, in this, uh, you know, fleeting aspect that we have, uh, that we're just showing Christ uh, while those are around us, because this is not uh, all it is. It's not just this life. We're not just, uh, you know, it's not just you only live once. You know, we live uh, for Christ. We live for Him, and, and that eternal life starts now. You know, we're, we're supposed to be spreading this gospel message, letting others know that Christ died for them, uh, so that they could choose to follow Him and come back to Him and be reconciled and live that life uh, with God, live that ambassadorship, live that representation out in the world that they're in. It's just a temporary setting. You know, He talks about the tent uh, that we have set up here. It's uh, just a moment here, you know. Uh, it's not uh, forever. You know, it's going to fade, but with God, we have eternal life set before us, and we need to let others know that that is what's ahead. That's what we should be focusing on. So, looking at this metaphor of the tent, uh, what does the metaphor of the tent in this passage mean? So, 
So in this passage, first off, it's referring to like your home, kind of like I interpret it to be like your home, like the area you surround yourself, so like the school that you attend, like all the places that you go to and kind of just the physical like places that you go to. Okay. Uh, so, you know, when, whenever you go out camping, you know, it's not permanent. You've got to have a setup where you can still stay, you know. Uh, and so we take a tent with us, you know, when we go out and we camp out in the woods. You know, we put something over our heads as a temporary shelter. But it's not meant to stay, right? Uh, it's something that uh, is just there for a moment. It's not going to stand up and last forever, but it's there momentarily giving us a place to live, giving us something uh, to shelter us. And, uh, and our lives here are like a tent uh, when we go camping. It's not meant to be forever. You know, in the, you know we, we spend just a few nights camping, and that's you know, the temporary in comparison to our life. But when you look at eternal life, uh, our lives are like that tent. You know, it's only for a few moments while we're here uh, that we have this uh, temporary space where we're living. We have this temporary life uh, that we're just uh, supposed to be representing who God is. You know, we've got to take every moment we have uh, in looking towards uh, what, um, what is eternity, you know, letting people know who He is and what He's done. Uh, and it's just for this moment. We just have that temporary setup, this temporary life, uh, until we can be with God. You know, and that's the ultimate goal. That's the plan He had for us, is for us to be with Him forever. You know, have that relationship with Him and not to be uh, in this temporary tent forever. You know, it's not meant to last here on earth, but it is going to last with God. You know, He has us set up to be with Him forever. You know, he's got that eternal dwelling place. He's got a place for us set, uh, set up in heaven so that we can be with him. You know, and our, our next question here uh, is, how does the passage encourage us to live as ambassadors? So I think one thing that stuck with you, me. I think one thing that stuck with me was in one of the verses, my underline disappeared. I have to find it. So, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Um, it just kind of, you know, force, forces us to kind of reevaluate that our life isn't just about us. It's the fact that Christ came and he sacrificed for us, sacrificed his life for us so that we could have eternal life. So, we kind of have to remember that his sacrifice compels us to, you know, be an ambassador and encourage others and just be part of his kingdom. Yeah, the love of God, you know, the love of Christ, the fact that he gave his life for us while we were still sinners, that he made a way back for us while we were still against him, you know, that he loved us that much uh, is our motivation for loving others and showing them that same love. You know, it's not just meant to be hidden in our hearts, but it's meant to be shown out in the world and let them know who he is. And our motivation is, you know, that just spreading that message, that gospel is our motivation. You know, we're called to love God and love people. And it's because God first loved us that we can even do that. You know, in 2 Corinthians, um, you know, here... Uh, before he starts this ministry of reconciliation, he says, therefore, we are uh, new creatures. You know, we're a new creation. You know, he has changed us so that we can uh, live that love out. He's made us new so that we can follow him. You know, he's given us that life to be able to uh, bring him glory and bring him honor. You know, we're no longer uh, trapped in our sin. We're no longer regarding things of the world. We're looking for... Uh, our motivation from heaven. We're looking for what God has and uh, looking at it through his eyes, looking at it through who he is uh, and being able to see the world as he sees it so that we can uh, be able to love the world as he loves it and be able to show them uh, that love that he has so that they can be reconciled back to him as well, so that they can be a part of the family of God too. Uh, and so... Uh, 
Our third question here is, according to this passage, what is the motivation to be Christ's ambassador? I think I kind of touched on that a little bit with my previous answer, too. But again, it's that idea that, you know, he came and he sacrificed his life for us so that we could live without sin or, or we could have eternal life despite our sins. And um, it's kind of that idea that, you know, if someone else can sacrifice their lives for me, then I can be an ambassador for them and I can show goodwill to others and I can show Christ's message. Yeah, our, our motivation, just like this passage encourages us, is that love of Christ. Uh, the love that God had for us to bring us back to Him, to keep us in His family, you know, to allow us to um, just be able to show that love. And our motivation is in the fact that we are in Christ. We're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, and we're all about bringing glory to God. We should be looking for uh, ways we can worship Him, ways we can love Him, ways we can love His people, and be able to bring them back uh, to God, be able to reconcile them. We've been given that ministry of reconciliation. We've been given the uh, ability to show others that God wants them back in a relationship with Him, that He wants them to come back to Him, to show love to Him like uh, He called us to be uh, with Him. Uh, and so, as we close... Uh, looking at this uh, passage, what are, your ch what are you challenged to do or change in your life to become a more effective ambassador? I think overall, and not just in this pas passage, but one of the big things is we're challenged to um, be disciples, to lead others to Christ. And so that's how we um, become more of an effective ambassador is by showing God's love for others and then leading them to Christ. Yeah, um, I would say the thing that I'm personally challenged with is usually, you know, making sure I'm slow to anger and that I am showing God's love uh, at all times. You know, I've, I've talked about this several times. It's very easy when driving to be, you know, focused on it's me here and someone else, you know, cuts me off or does something wrong, you know, and it upsets me. And in those instances, I need to, you know, I'm challenged to show God's love to be able to be a more effective uh, ambassador for him, uh, to be able to show his love even in the midst of, you know, a time when I'm going and running into someone I'm never going to meet again, never going to see in real life where I can hide uh, behind my car, you know, I I need to still show that passion and show that love, show compassion that uh, God has for people and be able to show that love instead of uh, be quick to anger in those situations, uh, to be a more effective uh, ambassador uh, in those times. And so we're going to take a deeper look into this and look at uh, our conduct. You know, our conduct matters here, whether uh, on a field trip or uh, in a game or on a mission trip, uh, or adults often remind students that they're traveling with to behave well since then, since they represent the group, you know, uh, and some schools even have codes of conduct that students must adhere to while away from the school on field trips, you know, they've got chaperones to watch the kids to make sure that they're uh, following the rules and being good representatives of their school, uh, similar to this, Olympians are representatives of their home country when they uh, go off to um, participate in the Olympics. You know, we've got the Summer Olympics from 2020 that are coming up here uh, here in the summer of 2021 now because of, um, you know, the COVID uh, that, you know, just canceled everything last year. Uh, and so how they perform and behave while... Uh, away at these uh, different cities uh, represents how people see their uh, country. You know, it affects the way we see their country. You know, some Olympians make their country proud by following the rules and working hard to win medals. Uh, and sometimes Olympians have broken laws or behaved badly while at the games, and then they uh, shown, shine a bad light against the country that they came from. You know, um, which brings sometimes shame or dishonor to their country. You know, the way we act and the things we do matter since we are always representing someone or something. 
So when have you been a representative of your school, church, family, country, club? I mean, I can answer to all of those. Um, specifically for school in high school, I got to go to the Conrad Adenauer Stiftung. Um, and now I can't translate that because a lot of it's a name. But essentially, they were allowed to have 12 American students who got to go meet with 12 German students from the Olympic school. And we would travel to historical sites around Berlin and then met with certain dignitaries from the German government. And it was just a chance for us to kind of like learn cultural differences while also learning like the history of Berlin and some tough times, but also being able to like just gain that perspective. So obviously, you know, you have a group of 12 American students who are being put into that environment and we had to have good behavior and portray like good American ideals and things like that. So that's also on the country side too. Yeah, um, you know, when I went just for two weeks to um, go across Europe, we were called the um, Kentucky Ambassadors of Music. You know, we were representing our state and our country at the same time. You know, uh, there were several states across America who would participate uh, in this uh, over the course of, uh, you know, the summer. And there was, uh, Kentucky was matched with uh, New Mexico when I went, and there uh, are several other uh, groups that were together, you know, uh, over the course of this time where uh, there were different states representing the country and the state themselves uh, to the people of Europe. And the people of Europe looked forward to uh, these concerts that were put on to hear the music uh, that we would listen to or that we would play over in the United States uh, that maybe they don't hear all the time. And, uh, and then, you know, we got to see some of their culture as well, where they represented, you know, uh, when we were in Austria, they uh, played polka music uh, occasionally to, you know, give us a taste of what they listened to. And, uh, and then when we were just walking around the cities, you know, we were representing uh, our state and our country without even knowing it. You know, it's easy to point out, okay, that's the, rep you know, that's the tourists in our country. And you can easily find out who's not actually, um, you know, from there. And, it becomes very easy to be a representative without even trying because people notice that very quickly and they'll point it out and they'll look for it uh, even. And, and it's, you know, we can't hide who we are, uh, so we must be able to be a representative. And that should be how it is with Christ. Uh, and I'm probably getting ahead of myself here in the question, so I'll go back to the uh, next question here. Why do we see foreign travelers as representatives of their home countries? So I have a slight different perspective on this because I actually lived in a foreign country. Um, and we were always told as Americans who lived abroad that we needed to blend in, to not wear shirts with things written all over them like, say, music groups who traveled abroad wearing matching shirts every day in the foreign cities they traveled to. Just pretty obvious. Um, but it was kind of the idea that, like, you know, you may be the only American that, you know, this person's ever met, and so you want to leave a lasting impression on them that you're not, you know, a terrible person. You know, you want to leave a good impression. You want to put your best foot forward so you represent your country well so they don't have a bad opinion of all Americans that they meet. Yeah, uh, so I think that was kind of the answer there was, you know, we see foreign travelers as representatives because that's sometimes the only uh, one we see from that country. You know, uh, we can live our entire lives and maybe only see a few of the tourists as, you know, uh, as representatives of a country uh, instead of, you know, um, actual dignitaries, you know, uh, being over in the country itself. You know, these representatives are usually all we see, these tourists are all that affect our lives uh, in the course of, you know, the years that we're here on earth. You know, we may never see anyone uh, specifically in their country, but we see their tourists sometimes. 
uh, when, you know, especially when we go to tourist areas, you know, when we go to theme parks or uh, different places around America and we run into these tourists and they're uh, from different countries or we go on cruises and we see these representatives from different countries because we're all traveling together. We're all foreign travelers and we get to interact uh, with these different people. And that's kind of why we see them as representatives of their home country. Uh, so let's switch gears here and look at how are Christ followers like students on a mission trip or Olympians overseas or these tourists or these representatives of uh, different countries? Well, I think going back to that idea that you want to leave a good impression because you may be the only one they ever meet, the same is true for being a Christian because if you don't leave a good impression with someone as a Christian, then they're going to have that opinion of all Christians and they're going to be less receptive to other Christians who may try and offer help later down the line or things like that. Um, so it's just the idea that you want to kind of put your best foot forward so that like what they think of you doesn't, you know, affect everyone else and so that they'll be more receptive to you. Yeah, you want to, you know, make sure that um, you're representing Christ uh, as he is. You know, we're not uh, here for our own glory. We're not here for our own desires. We're here for Christ. We're here to lift up his name. Uh, lift up who he is. And uh, when we represent him in this world, when we are the only one that uh, someone may see, one of our friends may only see us uh, and not other Christians, they may only uh, interact with us uh, in the entire course of their life, and they need to see God's glory. You know, we need to, um, you know, witness to them uh, even just by our actions. Uh, but we can't just stop there. You know, if, if we know someone needs to know who Christ is, needs to know what they've done, we need to let them know. We need to let them know the story of the gospel. Let them know that, you know, God wanted them to be with him and that we uh, sinned and fell away, uh, but God gave us a way back to him by sending his son to die on the cross, to take our place, to take our punishment so that we could have eternal life with him. We need to let them know that gospel message. Let them know that God is still reconciling us back to him, that he's given us a way uh, out of our punishment, out of sin, uh, to be able to be with him eternally uh, and be able to just uh, be in that family of God, be in that relationship and be able to just take on uh, the identity of Christ and be able to be a representative in the world just like we are supposed to be as well so that they can continue to let someone else know and uh, continue to represent and, and be an ambassador for Christ. Let them know uh, who he is and what he's done. And so our last question here is, how does seeing yourself as a representative of Christ change the way you want to live? I think overall, it just kind of encourages me that, you know, I need to continue to be polite and friendly, you know, when I'm out in public. So even if I'm at the grocery store and having a bad day and the clerk asks, how are you doing? You know, it's, you should always be nice and respond and reciprocate the um, conversation and stuff like that. It's just kind of encouraging you to kind of continue to put your best foot forward. Just like when you're little kids, your parents tell you to be on your best behavior because how you act as a little kid reflects on your parents as how they raise you. And it's the same idea, like how you act as a Christian, it kind of reflects on your, your faith. Yeah, and um, I think, you know, we need to be able to show, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, you know, wherever we are. We're supposed to show love when we're out in the world. We're supposed to uh, show those who come up to us this compassion, this love, uh, and be able to just uh, show them the love of God. Uh, and we should be uh, showing joy as well. We should be living out our lives uh, in a joyful manner that we know uh, who God is and what he's done for us. And we're so joyous in what he's given us. And so, um, you know, amazed at what he's done for us and be able to praise and honor him and give him glory. Uh, and, you know, we have peace knowing this as well. We have the peace of God uh, and this, uh, be able to just focus on that, you know, that gift that he's given us. Uh, and we have the kindness for others. You know, we've, we go out and we just, you know, we wish them happy, you know, a happy day or, or you know, we have that kindness. Look for what we can do for them. Uh, lift, look for how we can lift them up in either prayer or in service and be able to help them. You know, uh, all of these, uh, 
you know, fruits that we are given to be able to show who God is, you know, show who, uh, what He's done by uh, how we live and how we work, you know, um, being able to just lift Him up and give Him glory and give Him honor uh, by what He's done, whether, you know, we're at school, whether we're at home with our family, uh, whether we're out with our friends, whether we're at the church, you know, all of these places, we should be showing who God is. It's not just we come in on Sunday morning. We don't just come on a, on Wednesday night. We don't just uh, pray to God in the morning and pray to Him at night. You know, pray for Him for each meal. We we constantly are just living this life full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control all the time. We're showing it to our families. We're showing it to our friends. We're showing it uh, to the church, to the uh, family of God. We're showing it to. Uh, our teachers at school. We're showing it to uh, those we meet at work, uh, our co-workers, our su- uh, supervisors. You know, uh, We're showing this love, this, uh, what God has for us out in the world in everything we do. You know, and that's what uh, God calls for us to do. And so uh, as we look at being you know, these ambassadors for Christ, our live it out section here is, you know, Finish the following sentence. As an ambassador of Christ, my role is blank. Uh, And fill it in with a bulleted list uh, detailing what it means to be an ambassador in different areas of your life, whether that's at home, at church, at school, uh, in your extracurricular activities, at work, wherever it is, uh, make a list of what it takes to show who God is. Uh, to be that representative, to be that ambassador of Christ? What is your role to be able to show that uh, in each of these areas of your life? And pick one of those areas, at least one, uh, you could do more if you want to, and focus on it this week and how you can represent Christ well by following uh, those lists that you made, you know, to be able to show who He is. And our takeaway here is that we are Christ ambassadors, the role, this role helps us navigate how to live in the world while looking forward to our eternal home in heaven. And our memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And so just remember that this week, that we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making His appeal. God is uh, letting others know what He's done for them through what He's done for us. He's showing His glory, showing His honor through how He saved us. And we're uh, supposed to go out and live that message out and show that message and tell that message to the world, letting others know to be reconciled to God bring them back into that relationship, that relationship that we're talking here uh, for the past few months that we've been looking at that God has for us, that He wants us to be more a part of, that He wants us to bring others a part of too. Uh, And we just want to be able to just focus on that and just be able to lift God up and show His glory. Uh, Please uh, pray with me as we close here. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this time we have to just dive into your word and be able to just uh, see what you have for us and uh, that we could just go out this week and be representatives for you, that we could be ambassadors for Christ, uh, that we would live out uh, what you've done for us so that others can see it, so that others can see uh, that reconciliation that you've given us and uh, that we can just be that representative out in the world to you, whether we're at work, at school, at church, at home, uh, that we just live our lives for you, uh, that you are just the ultimate uh, glory that uh, is seen uh, in our lives. And we just ask as as we go out these doors, as we uh, go away from our computers, as we uh, just live our lives for you, that we would just be able to show you to the world. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to keep looking for our videos each week. Uh, You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Vimeo, to our Facebook. Uh, Become a friend, follow us, you know, uh, and keep looking for our videos each week for the youth uh, and follow along, you know, reach out to us in the comments, uh, reach us by email, let us know what's going on. 
you know, so that we can just come alongside you in either prayer or service. How, whatever you need, uh, we want to be there for you. Uh, and just let us know, and we look forward to when we can be back in person again as well. Uh, until then, we'll see you again next week.